Artwork, critiques, Photoshop files and reference sheets are all available on my Patreon. Well hello there guys and girls, I hope you're all doing bloody well. My name's Mikey and welcome along to another episode of Draw With Mikey, episode 132. Oh my goodness guys, hasn't it been a long old while? So it looks like the whole world's crashing and burning since uh, we last touched bases, so that's fantastic. Um, but yeah guys, it really has been a good bit of time away and uh, let's slowly warm ourselves back up into things. Um, basically I always take a break from YouTube in general around about kind of Christmas, New Year's, December, January, just as a kind of mental safety play more than anything. However, it turned out that actually what I really wanted was a really lovely long break away from things. And the truth is, this wouldn't be my dream job if I had to do it when I didn't want to. Um, so fortunately, I had that option and it turns out I was taking it. We had this massive hiatus time off. So thank you so much for bearing with. I do appreciate from a consumer point of view, you, the viewer, it does mean that you're not getting that fresh content that you would otherwise like. So here we are. Let's just get ourselves back in the flow. Thank you so much for waiting. It's lovely to see you. Also, um, just on the side of things, I can barely remember how we do this. It has been such a long while, so I'm really sorry if this is one of those awkward, derpy episodes. And also, on top of that, I've got some new audio recording equipment, so maybe the sound audio levels and my voice might sound a little bit deeper or um, different from before because I've like got this mixer now instead of doing things digitally. Let me know if anything sounds a little bit off. Um, and so, yeah, last episode, long, long ago, last year, 2019, can you believe that? Um, we were doing some Baby Yoda female gender bent uh, Mandalorian stuff. Yeah, you know, it's just trying out some shapes and design ideas. And in the background of today's episode, I'm currently working um, on a complete piece, uh, which is usually something I do for a weekend time lapse. This is Danny and Victoria wearing some Renaissance combat garb um, done by a, another manga car. Uh, the garb, I should say, the outfit. Um, so I'm going to look them up and make sure I've stuck it in the um, uh, details section below. Oh my god, there we go. Because I've just remembered that I didn't look it up just before I started recording. Have I ever said that this is the most professional series on YouTube? So for any of you guys who are a bit new and are thinking, oh wait, what's going on? Why is this guy just rambling along? I was expecting a tutorial or some information on the artwork he's doing. Well, guys, the midweek series, the Draw of Mikey series, is the long rambling way that I basically just get to touch bases with you guys at home. It's just a way of um, answering any questions you might have. So if you've got anything you want to ask me, thoughts, feedback, comments, get yourself in the comments section below and I'll be reading out next week around. Always a pleasure. And uh, yeah, it's just how I kind of keep bases with you guys and ask you guys questions because really you guys keep me in touch with what's going on in this big old world of mine so thank you so much um but that's basically what's going on there the reason why i've not made it a weekend piece instead for a time lapse is because this is actually the penultimate of the really old patreon catch-ups i had to do this is going all the way throwbacks to may of last year don't worry it doesn't start all the way back from there it was just this really unusual gap that i had um so this is going to be out on their rewards packs and sorted out over this weekend which is fantastic we've got a whole lineup of things which i'm popping out now as part of that get it all cleared out the way kind of vibe which is fun fantastical i'll just repeat myself and also um as you can see in this kind of picture I really wanted to change how I was doing things. I do a lot of saturated fan arts with very crisp edges. This time I tried to create a very low saturation piece with a different feeling altogether. A lot of muted colours and tones and really give the ladies a kind of feel as if they might be statuettes or something of that nature. Also, side note, I've got a frog in my throat so I really do apologise if I keep clearing it. And, do you hear that? Why not, you lovely people at home, grab yourself a cheeky tea or coffee. We're going to be here for an hour, rambling away, catching up with you guys, reading your comments. Maybe you guys are getting your own artwork, homework, or stuff and ting done in the background. Thanks for the company. Let's sip this. Mm, fantastic. So with that in mind, I thought what I would do is just do a shout out for the highest tier May patrons now instead of at the end of the episode, just whilst I remember, because we always have to power wrap it in. So... This time last year, um, I got some great support from the Hardcore crew, which was at the time Zahaki, Homongchi L, Fabio, Matthew A, Jamie, Michael P, Carlos R, El Tempeste, Medissa, Ryder 2KX, Monkey D Luffy, Joshua SS, Brendan J, and Anthony C. You absolute championes. I bet you thought I'd forgotten about you. Nah. 
No, bruv, I hadn't. I hadn't. I've been working away. I've been industrious. So um, this weekend, I'll be getting my stuff and ting out to you, all of the patrons of that month, of course. And um, yeah, of course, links below to my Patreon page and all that sort of thing. But it's it's all on catch up at the moment, which is why I don't do the hard sell. But bloody love you guys. Let's go back here. Let's go back into chat. Let's see what's going on. And anybody who's been a current patron, don't worry, I'm behind. We're getting up to that. And anyone who's a patron from last month, you will be getting read out and added to the kind of stuff for uh, the weekend videos and things like that. This is just where I'm currently sticking my catch up. Okay, is that is that enough of an explanation? Guys, what have you done to 2020? Who Guys, who ruined 2020? Put your hands up. I know it's one of you. Anyway, in the uh, comment section to the last episode, uh, Robomation says, When feminists say that the Mandalorian should have been a woman. Yes, Mikey has come to gender bend accordingly. And uh, Angelico Asieta says, Our hero is back, stronger and thicker than before. Uh, <laughs> yeah, kind of I was, and then I was out again. But thank you so much. Tom James is saying that Mikey is basically a triple X parody of Mark Crilly. I'm not complaining. Great art as usual. Hey, Tom, man. Thank you very much for the kind words. Any kind of comparison to the daddy of YouTube drawing lessons, Mark Crilly himself? I'll take it. I'll be, um, I'll be pervy anime sage Mark Crilly any day of the week. And Tyson Pettigrew says, Haven't you seen a plot in a while? I hope everything... Oh, I see. Haven't seen you post in a while. I hope everything is well with you. Tyson, yeah, I just took a big chunk of time. Big old chunk of time off. Um, which is absolutely lovely because it means I'm all refreshed and I'm so keen to get back into things. Uh, so yeah, I'm a happy chappy otherwise. But a little bit of downtime is usually a very, very good idea. Uh, Homongchi L says, cue the Jojo music. Mikey, YouTube? YouTube, Mikey! Mikey proceeds to deer walk towards YouTube HQ. Na 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 na. That's my attempt at doing the Pillar Men theme tune. Oh wow, it took what? Five minutes into the first episode. We're back to the singing again. Uh, Supreme Emperor Mitten says, the Brestalorian, the most bobacious and dangerous bounty hunter ever. Oh, the Brestalorian. I can't believe I didn't think of that one myself. Oh, talking about, you know, salubrious bodies and other such things. Have you guys seen Loba, the new Apex character? Like, like, damn, son, are you, are you kidding me? When they were designing her, they knew what they were doing. Mm, absolutely delicious. I'm very pleased with society. Um, Adian Martinez says, uh, finally, the Lord of Ludity has returned. What the hell took so long? Hey man, Adian, I'm so sorry. It's all about those times out and those breaks. I mean, I've not been like disappeared from the internet. I have spent this entire time live on, oh, here's a bump, live on twitch.tv forward slash Mikey Mega Mega, links below. No, I have actually spent this entire time <laughs> mostly playing video games. Guys, there are so many fantastic games coming out this year. Um, It kind of, oh, I mean, like we've got Doom Eternal out, we've got The Last of Us coming up, all these things. They're all being hiatus a little bit. But it's all kind of running up towards the end of the year. I want to say September the 17th is when uh, Cyberpunk is going to be out and being absolutely fantastic and stuff. So on Twitch, uh, I'm going to be playing for a load of classic Cyberpunk video games as we kind of get our sweet selves lined up and all the other things, as well as obviously drawing live on that platform as well. But, you know, we've got to start YouTubing again. Kirito Uchiha says, press F to pay respects to 2014 to 2019. You will be missed, Mikey. Oh, bless. Bless your heart. Now, 2014, 2015, as far as I'm concerned, are absolutely fine. Personally, for me, and for a lot of society, and I know it's easy to forget, but honestly, think back and you'll probably agree. 2016 really was one of the worst years ever. I just, I've got nothing good to remember about that year. It was really, really bad. Um, and I think, did it all start with Harambe? Basically, it's just been going a little bit wonky ever since then. Society's been a little bit scuffed. But this year, you know, it's it's not amazing. However, however, personally, um, and, you know, quick real talk, guys. Much love to anybody who's been affected by COVID, lost any loved ones and all that sort of stuff. It sucks, and I'm not making light of it. Much love. Let's kind of just get through this shit, right? Um, which would help if I was making more drawing tutorials, because a lot of people have started picking up artwork, which makes me a very happy man. Um, but personally, you know, if you're me, you're a shut-in. So <laughs> very little change to my life, can I say that? Uh, Rex said, oh, I nearly had a cough then. Rex says, can we all appreciate how much details Mikey puts in all of his drawings? Oh, Rex, you are an absolute charmer. Thank you so much. I mean, the piece that's on screen right now is like more of a finished product. It took maybe... 36, 37 hours, something like that. I mean, I spent a lot of it talking on a live stream. However, 
the main point of the Draw of Mikey series, other than touching bases with you lovely, beautiful people, is for me just to share with you whatever I happen to be working on. Now, sometimes that might mean you're going to see some nice completed artwork. Sometimes it might just be me derping in a sketchbook or just coming out with nothing good and just having to draw a load of shapes until I've gotten like some bad juju out of my system and I can feel like an art again. And that's the whole point, right? Like the arting journey is ups and downs and I want you guys to kind of, you know, see that me just as much as anybody else really just makes a whole world of mistakes uh, which is my basic way of saying next episode you'll probably see something terrible compared to this episode thank you uh viclane says you're back after so long i missed you man also have you watched the anime the cautious hero <gasps> no i have not oh my god i've just remembered my favorite thing about this series taking all of your ideas and suggestions guys if you have any suggestions for anime and video games right now I will always add it to my notepad file. The Cautious Hero. No, I'm actually a bit behind. I'm still... Now, any of you old... Because we've had a... So it turns out, really quick sidebar. It turns out, guys, the only thing holding my channel back was me. Since I've stopped uploading videos, like, we've had thousands and thousands of new people come and subscribe. <laughs> What are you trying to tell me, bruv? Wow, that really hurts my feelings. No, 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 I'm only kidding. Welcome on in. Um, so for any of you guys who are a bit new, I love taking all of your ideas and suggestions for Stuff and Ting as well. Um, but uh, yeah, welcome on in. Cautious Hero, I... So, oh yeah, so basically for a lot of you old schoolers, you'll remember that I was trying to work my way back through Season 2, Battle Tendency of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I'm actually still about to watch, and I've been in this state of being for several months, because of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Oh my god, we can talk about video games all day. I'm not kidding. The Final Fantasy VII Remake came out, so I just committed my life to that for a bit. Um, one day, detailed review in the future, perhaps. But um, I've still got to do the Caesar Zeppeli fight. You guys know the one I'm talking about, the emotional one that ends up with the blood bubble. Um, and then we will be diving our way back into some new animes. So many suggestions. So many fantastic anime. And I've still not even started trying to get into Boku no Hero. But hey, that's just the way it be. Metro Zone says, does anybody get lost where his moose is sometimes? I'm assuming you're talking about my mouse or stylus on screen. Um, it is time-lapse footage, so I do appreciate it's going much quicker than it would do in real life. And Randy Breadbox says, <laughs> I love your name, says, Mikey. Uh, hello there, Randy. It's been six years since I took drawing seriously, and this stuff is hard. Mate, tell me about it. I spend like 30 to 40 plus minutes trying to make my skeleton and rough shapes look even barely decent. I get bored, I draw over it, I get discouraged and embarrassed after seeing the monstrosity that I created, and then I take a super long break. Um, I feel like I'm just not getting any better. People only ever say to practice, but never how to practice. Randy Breadbox, you've come to the right place, good sir. Firstly, I want to address your thoughts and feelings which are completely natural. Dude, anybody on that art journey will always hit a wall of frustration and things like this. Your progress is never this smooth line that just goes up. It's always bumps and troughs and cliffs and jumps of progress and then plateaus and then mild dips and then jumps again. So that kind of weird kind of feelings and emotional range you're getting with what you produce is a completely normal thing. I would recommend, I've done a video a long time ago about building technical skills. So if you're um, trying to just find your own style and natural way of things, then what you want to do is kind of just draw anything and everything. I'm talking about every single mundane, boring object. Draw it simply. Now, I'm assuming we're talking about a slightly cartoonish anime style, but we might be talking about fine art. So please adapt to my answer accordingly, because there's a different path for everything. But draw every single object that's in your room, no matter how boring it looks. Just sit there and just um, draw a simple outline for it. Try to kind of simplify the core parts of it or sketch it or dive it in. And then start drawing these boring objects without looking at them. Just draw them from your own imagination. Now that you know what they physically look like, because you've sat down really looked at it because guys nothing will make you truly look at something like having to draw it your mind as i'm sure most of you know already your mind fills in the gaps you look at something and your brain just kind of goes yeah yeah yeah. i've seen all of it it's got all this extra stuff but your eyes may not have actually genuinely looked at the whole object your brain just fills in with all these assumptions so when you're actually studying something you're going to really stare at it you're going to really log and catalog the details and then start drawing it without looking at the original thing draw a telephone and then draw a telephone without looking at the telephone and just see what comes out in your version what bits are kind of really sticking in your mind and highlighting and you can just go down this journey forever you could just sit there and get a nature documentary up about, I don't know, lemurs and just watch lemurs and just sketch lemurs all day long and keep drawing lemurs and then try breaking the lemurs down into basic shapes and then look at lemurs again and then come away and fill a page of your sketchbook with lemurs without looking at anything 
just what part of Lima's, this is a really bad example, what part of Lima's stayed in your brain. And on a completely different boat, if you want to feel a bit more motivated and build up your technical skill compared to finding your style, then that's when you can really have a load of fun. This is what I love doing. Find artwork that really motivates you. Just literally amazing art, or anime fan arts and things where you see it and you're just like, wow, I'm blown away by this. It looks fantastic. And then sit there and do a study of that. Sit down, copy it, and have a look at what you've drawn compared to the original and ask yourself, have I really captured whatever it is that made me feel so motivated about the original? Or is what I've done a little bit off? Is my hair less detailed? Have I got a very consistent line weight where the original copy has a lot of variation of line thickness? Are the eyes on my character a bit too far apart, close, to be close together, too big, and all that sort of stuff? And then maybe have a go at drawing it again and just seeing if you can make your study a bit more closer, a bit more technically accurate. Because that's going to build up your hand-eye coordination. It's going to build up your judgment and your visual acuity as well. Um, so there's a whole load of ways to go out of it. Um, but when it comes to those feelings of feeling a bit stuck or a bit emotionally worn down, Come away, have a break, go hang out with your friends, not during these COVID times. Um, go hang out in a garden and stare at, into the sunset, I don't know, whatever you do when you don't have friends. And then separately, after that break, maybe come back, you'll feel a bit more infused, but also look at loads of delicious artwork. Um, Digitally, I always recommend Pinterest. Pinterest is a double-edged sword. It will show you incredible, fantastic art, which will make you feel very motivated. But it's nigh on impossible to find the original artist that did it because it's just posted images. And it, it's even like more creepy when people are adding their own like poetic breakdown of what they think the image is all about. Oh, the lady looks at the sunset. She's the lone wolf, a single howl in the sky. And you're just like, who's this fucking random person who's just put their micro monologue on this piece of artwork? Like, don't fucking rub your ego all over. S anyway, basically, I'm calling out every everyone who thinks they're a creative writer right now. I'm going to tell you, sometimes you don't need to share your work with others. <laughs> sometimes you can keep it to yourself. Okay, this is getting a bit <laughs> getting a bit personal now. Okay, safe space, guys. Lovely to have you. Um, but if uh, you're after a physical copy of something, if you're a bit like me and you like your books, I'm just looking over my shoulder one sec. There's a book series called Spectrum. Spectrum is just a collection of modern fantasy artwork, like the best of the best. It's really incredible stuff. Um, you can grab a softback copy for maybe 15, 16 quid, something like that. But it will have incredible artwork to page your way through. So, um, yeah, just kind of, you know, pour into that bucket that is your head as many inputs as you can that you like and see what comes out the other end from your fingers. Blue Sap says the anime with the android angel is Heaven's Lost Property. Oh yeah, guys, so you're often being my memory for me as well. Yeah, 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 Heaven's Lost Property. I did a fan art of the Android Angel from that, the one who loves the watermelon. Suika? Suika Deska? Um, but we need to do another one of her one day because that is some old, old stuff. And that was when I was first getting used to digital myself. Not that I've learned, I'm still learning all the time. But back then my work was disgusting. Uh, Hiltzi says, uh, the man is back. I just subscribed a few weeks ago and you made my anime drawing skills improve a lot. Hey, that always makes me happy to hear, dude. Uh, more good videos to come sensei. Oh, well, now there will be. And also a request. Can you do a coloring anime with colored pencil tutorial? That would help me a lot. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have a really good Faber-Castell style pack of colouring pencils, but I do... Wait a minute. Can you hear this? Rattle, rattle, rattle. Um, I got a whole load of um, Copic markers. I bought the um, t box sets of 12, so I've got like the winter set, the architecture set, the skin tones. Um, so yes, we will be leaning into the sketchbook. So I can talk about Copic stuff. However, I've got a lot to learn of Copics. I've not really dived into them. I love my warm grey set, but I've not really gotten into the colours. They, you have to blend them in a very particular way. And um, to be an accredited teacher, you have to take like an official Copic course. So there's probably some other people around right now who could really tell you more about that than I could. But it's certainly something I want to get my teeth into as well. I do love physical artwork in a sketchbook. A lot of what you see from me is digital. But don't think I don't love that sketchbook vibe. Um, Hodok says, channel update. Towards the end of last year, Mikey had a lot of his videos flagged and demonetized. This is true. It can take a while to process one video to get unflagged. It can take up to two months. One month for them to initially um, decide not to do it. Oh, no, I'm thinking of copyright strikes. Yeah, no, it can take a while, though. Uh, so it's taking a while to process many claims whilst avoiding strikes. He's active on Twitch, Twitter, and Patreon if you care to look. Hello! Um, I would have thought that he would have at least posted a short update video on his channel to let his audience know. Well, here I am. Yeah, I, do you know what? I just, I don't like update videos. This might sound really dodgy. But, um, 
As far as I'm concerned, you either make content or you don't, but posting a video apologising for not making content is exactly the kind of stuff that I don't care for. Um, so I'm either here or I'm not. But hello, welcome on back. Kybred says, oh by the way, hold up, you're pretty much right, so thank you so much. Kybred says, I think it would be cool if you drew any of the No Game No Life girls someday. I don't know if you've seen the anime or not. Also, I love, love your art. Oh! Hey, Kybred, thank you. Uh, your tutorials have helped my art grow so much. Well, that is fantastic to hear, good sir. Hmm, no game, no life. No, but I'm going to just copy what you're saying right here, Kybred. Thank you very much and paste. I'm always looking for waifus. There's so many. So we've got to do like the Apex Girls. Valorant is out. Now, don't hate me. I've not played it. So I want you to know that I know my opinion is not valid because I've not actually played the game. But am I the only person who looks at Valorant and just really feels like it's lacking something? Now, I don't know if it's because I play Apex Legends, so the guns have a nice meaty feel all the time. But Valorant just feels so kind of... It feels like it's just missing a layer of sound effects or visual effects. It's just... It, just, it doesn't grab my attention. Let's put it that way. However, if there's hot waifus, you know, swings and roundabouts. Um, Kami Time Subi says uh, he didn't kill himself. He just wanted to put that out first. Glad, glad you're back, Waiki. Oh, okay. He didn't kill himself. Wait, are you talking about mystery from um, the eels? Were we talking about that a while ago? Yeah, no, he's still around at least. Devin Giles says, uh, Mikey, I have some requests for future speed paint videos. Suggestions include Elizabeth from The Seven Deadly Sins, Nami from One Piece, Wendy Marvel from Fairy Tale, Mia Valentine from Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Sakura Kasugano, Street Fighter, and Poison from Final Fight. <gasps> wow. Okay, I'm not going to lie, but there's some pretty dope ass suggestions let's add them in guys i feel like i'm always trying to find my style and i'm always trying to draw a bit quicker and then i don't want to do too many quick drawings because then i feel like i need to do like a a worthy piece for patreon and all that sort of stuff it's a real battle in it sometimes anyway thank you for that lovely list of suggestions more importantly thank you for including the universes that they come from that makes my life so much easier Mm, lovely sip of tea. Cat Hughes says, Hey Mikey, hello there Cat. I came across your channel recently and you're now my favourite art channel. Oh my! Hey, thanks for saying. Um, I absolutely love your style and how you actually connect and talk to your viewers. Not a lot of people actually do that. Well, I'm assuming a lot of other people have better <laughs> have lives or something. I need you guys. No, I'm only, I'm only kidding. That's really kind of you to say, man. Um, I would like to propose that you draw Alice Nakiri from Shokugeki no Soma. That's the cooking one where the manga car... Now, I don't know what the story is, but I'm always interested. Is that the cooking one where the manga car got sick of doing it? And then he got screwed over by the editors or something, and a second guy had to finish the manga? Um, it's an anime about food and kind of like Hell's Kitchen where they have to cook, do cook-offs, but Alice is definitely waifu. Mm. Oh, read more. Material. <laughs> okay, good. Cat Hughes, thank you. I'm going to add that to the notepad file as well. Da-da. Da-da. And uh, 2426, what's cuter than Baby Yoda? Cosmic Draconian says, you are Mikey. <gasps> oh, how rough. Cosmic Draconian, thank you so much. Uh, I respect you, thank you. And Roy Beaumont says, hey Mikey, I've been using your tutorials to reteach myself to draw. Your attitude and style is awesome. Your thoughts on Sword Art Online? Question mark. Hello there, Roy. Thank you very much for the kind words. Now, bear in mind, I am... Um, I'm not one of these hyper types. I just try to talk very quickly when we're doing the Draw of Mikey episodes so that I can get in as many of your comments as possible. Uh, normally, I'm just sitting there quietly with my hands in my lap, staring into the sky. That's that's how I like to be left. Sword Art Online. Okay, well, I love you guys, but I'm going to just um, say it like this. Visually, it looked really, really interesting. And in terms of how it's written and how they have the main character, I had absolutely no connection. I didn't care for him whatsoever, and I realised I was bored by watching it. I just... You go into this world, the main character in Sword Art Online is super... Now, I only watched about five or six episodes, but he's super OP. The characters he hangs around with don't really return in the very beginning. Like, there's some random girl and they get some bread or something. And then later he joins, like, a crew of people, but they get involved in an overpowered fight and they all die or something. And the main character, he's just like... He's just like, oh, I'm stuck in this game. And he's really boring. And he's super OP. And there's nothing interesting going on with him at all. There's no character arc. There's nothing. It's like... Now, I'm not going to go on a massive rant here. But let's... And it all comes back to Black Panther. Marvel Universe's Black Panther. 
Is it great that they're making a film with loads of black actors and all this sort of stuff? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Of course it was. However, <clears throat> my concern of Black Panther has nothing to do with race or agenda. My concern of Black Panther was the fact that Black Panther was boring. The main character has already settled all of his emotional baggage in um, Civil War. By the end of Civil War, he's learned to, you know, I do not seek revenge anymore and all that sort of stuff. So by the time we're in Black Panther, he's just, he's as interesting as a plank of wood. Now, is he a great king? Yes. But is he an interesting character with a character arc? No. The only person who's interesting in Black Panther is Killmonger. Now, okay, my really short version is this. Killmonger did nothing wrong. Killmonger was a legitimate heir to the throne. He had rank and title. He succeeded to the throne legitimately and legally by um, the Black Panther Wakandan standards. Um... <clears throat> And it was only the writers, after they put him in the throne, had to add a quick bit about killing women and children if they needed to. Because they'd realised that, oh, Kill Kill Killmonger's actually legit. He's He actually should be here. Um, and Black Panther, two things. One, it's about classism and it's disgusting. Because um, it's not the fact that there's a bad guy in charge. It's just the fact that there's somebody from a lower class in charge. And all the people at the top, all the first class and uh, their middle class underlings are just like, oh, we can't have it like this. Anything could happen. And at the end of Black Panther, after they have their really low CG fight, um, once Black Panther has won, and this is a real fucking slap in the face. And maybe I'm reading too much into it. Once Black Panther has won, once the classism is re-established and the hierarchical rule is back in place, then he has the gall to turn to Killmonger and says, "You know, we could heal you." And kill, and that is basically it's like saying, now that I'm back in charge and in top, even though you legally and le legitimately took power. Now that I've got the power back where I want it and I'm number one, now I'm going to magnanimously offer you medical aid. It is fucking elitism to the core. It's disgusting. So the story of Black Panther is basically that um, if you try to follow the system that's in place to make real change in your life, the people at the top are always going to make sure that that doesn't actually happen. That is the story of Black Panther in a nutshell. Not And not even getting over the fact that they physically put Black Panther over a very delicate part of Africa that is war-torn and fucked up. But they're just like, no, 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 we don't need to worry about the real fucking horrific events that are happening in some parts of Africa. Because um, actually in our Marvel Universe, for a super race of super powerful people, we don't need to hold any kind of cultural guilt whatsoever. Just enjoy the movie. And yes, I am aware that I'm thinking about it too much and maybe it's my fault. C who mentioned Black Panther? Who mentioned... Anyway, I just want you guys to know, it's your fault. Roy Beaumont, it was you. You talked about Sword Art Online. Roy, how dare you? So yeah, that's that's my thoughts and feelings. Killmonger was in fact a genuinely good character. It was only the writers, once they put him in a chair, had to make him suddenly become a bad guy. Uh, I don't blame Killmonger for that. I literally blame writers. And there was no interesting character journey arc because it had already been resolved previously. It doesn't make him a bad character. It makes him a disinteresting character. And um, yeah... It was a fucking classist, elitist nightmare, and it just makes me sick to my core. Because, oh, everything's fine once Black Panther and the first class elite are back where they should be. Now we can afford to be good. Now Wakanda can afford to help people, because everything's nice and neat where I need it. The people at the bottom are staying at the bottom, and they're no longer able to move or percolate up towards the top. Let's put a lid on the lower class. Oh, man, that movie. Anyway, so I'm um, sorry about the rant. <laughs> we are we going into deep rant time? Other than that, I loved it. <laughs> Dragon Lol says, first of all, I love your art and really enjoy the talk. Fantastic. I hope you guys are getting some artwork and projects done in the background right now. I'm more into drawing than actual anime. Hey, good for you. But recently I got to draw some anime and you're a big inspiration. So thank you. Hey, Dragon Lol, thank you very much for the kind comment. And no, you're welcome. Uh, Yuri Bremner says, doing a Rose impression at the end of Titanic. Uh, where she was lying on the door. Come back! Yuri, you're so kind. How have you been, dude? And Amber Blossom says, Mikey, thank you for what you do. Amber, thank you for saying. That's really, really kind. Oh, you guys are so lovely. Uh, the original Fayari says, I hope Mikey's okay during this coronavirus quarantine time. Yeah, I'm okay, dude. I need to do a little bit more exercise. I'm about three months behind on my exercise game plan. So don't hate me physically for that. But other than that and getting out of the house, nah, I can't complain. And Hyperhero25 says, I've missed this guy, so I've been waiting for the latest upload. Oh, I see. 
I see Iberia. <laughs> Welcome in. Uh, Tutor M says, Hey Mikey, hello there, Tutor M. I'm glad you're back. Now, thank you. Look up one of my favourite mangas. It's Dragon Half. It's a bit of an odd series, or an old series, but it's a fun read and the author ends up creating his own unique drawing style around the end of the series. P.S. Um, I will be there when you play the Old Witcher games. I've played the first one twice, the second one three times. I wanted a particular ending. Hey, thank you very much, man. Just come dive along on Twitch where we're playing games all the time. Right now, I finished the Final Fantasy VII Remake. We just finished playing Doom. Uh, currently still playing The Witcher 3, but I'm all the way over on a Skelly Isles now. And uh, we're soon to start Doom Eternal. I'm playing The Last of Us currently, in line for The Last of Us 2. Uh, we're going to be playing the Shadow of the Colossus Remake for my chill-out sessions. And, um, yeah, you know, some other games. Oh, yeah, 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 Marvel Spider-Man. Oh, my God! Guys, Marvel Spider-Man is an incredibly enjoyable game. Holy shit, I've been sleeping on that one. One of my, um... Mods eventually put me onto that, but what a hell of a, what a hell of a game. Angry Drawing says, whilst listening to this video, I've been drawing a hot but terrifying anglerfish woman. That sounds disgusting. I'm going to stop reading your comment. Uh, Tutor M, thank you very much. I'm just going to copy your dragon half bit. Let's go back here. No, I'm only kidding, Angry Drawings. Um, as for what the cutest thing is, I like Gizmo. Gizmo is very cute. It's so strange, but it is cute. Uh, the one thing that I definitely recommend is drawing a hot and spicy Titanfall pilots. So I keep forgetting this. I have to be reminded that Apex Legends is set in the Titanfall universe. So if I just draw the Apex characters, does that still count? Also, people have told me that Titanfall 2 is actually a really good game as well. But I don't know, like, is it great? Like, I've only got the time to play great games. So sometimes good games just don't cut it for me. <clears throat> Hope that makes sense. Um, Zach Timodo says, I need more content from the wife who got himself. So yeah, guys, basically, also, hello. Here's the content right now. So guys, do get in the comment section. If you've got any questions about our anime video games, certainly that tends to be the things we talk about, but you can ask me anything. This is just a chat. This is just a way for us to keep up with each other. Um, so don't be shy. Um, but yeah, if you've actually got any really good suggestions for video games and anime, please do. Please do hook me up. Um, Oiled Blade here, now in the form of Sims, says, Hey dude, you're finally jumping on them Witcher books. I'm so glad. I can't wait for you to play again on stream. Hey, thank you so much, dude. Hey, yeah, since then I've read them all. I've read the Andrei Sapowski Witcher series. Um, I read all the books just in time for the TV series. <sighs> Fuck. Um, it has been a long old while since we've been doing that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, this isn't a spoiler, but it's very interesting to know. I really like the Witcher books. I'm going to be honest, once we got into the Witcher novels, Geralt turned out to be, and I'm not saying it was bad, they were still good chapters, but it turns out that Geralt of Rivia is pretty much the most boring character in that series of books. All of the other characters are so interesting to see what they're up to. So I thought that was really cool. Um, what actually happens between Ciri being a young girl and becoming a woman of age is mental and incredible, um, which is just really nice to kind of sink your teeth into. And uh, I really like the fact that the Witcher series, the world of the Witcher, acknowledges our universe they acknowledge the existence of us which is really fucked up um so there's some stuff involving arthurian legend but that's as far as i'm going to go basically um um they're not absolute mind blowers but they are definitely what i would call good reads um so yeah get involved read the series you'll definitely enjoy it it's no dune sure um it's no hyperion oh my god also i love hyperion um, but Fall of Hyperion, or no, Rise of Hyperion? Anyway, the second book from the first part of the series. When they get to the Time Tombs, they fucking have nothing to do. Like, the only interesting thing about the uh, Hyperion sequel, Fall of Hyperion, or End of Hyperion, is what happens with the Keats hybrid stuff. That's really interesting, because it leads to the state of the universe and what actually happens with the war. But all of the interesting characters from the first one just fucking, they sit, ooh, today they bivouacked in the sand. They walked to this tomb, it was empty. They walked to that tomb, it was empty. One of them disappears, it was empty. Ah. Anyway, so basically I think my memory had made the entire series become fantastic. Whereas in reality, the first book's really, really good and the rest are all a bit there. And Endymion, holy shit, I thought Endymion was okay. I reread Endymion. You can, <laughs> you can leave Endymion. <laughs> You don't need to pick that. You don't need to pick up that book series. <laughs> anyway, I'm just 
I'm just coming to understand this world of mine. Anyway, let's focus on the comments, guys. It really is all about you, and I want to catch as many of these as I can. So let's power on in. Jason Dean Art says, Hey, Mikey. Hello there, Jason. I've missed your videos. Did you enjoy your visit to Japan? I hope you did. Oh, yeah, guys! I went to Japan for a week, and I filmed a vlog, and I've still not edited it or turned it into a vlog for my other channel, Mikey on Tour. Uh, Mikey on Tour... As a concept and an idea, if you haven't noticed by now, has been postponed by a year because of COVID. Um, but yeah, very excited about doing all of that stuff and ting later and uh, getting around out the world. But yeah, I fucking loved it. It was a power week, so it really was a very intense go here, march around, see the stuff, log the thing, go there, edit, upload, march around, see the stuff, log the thing. It wasn't a relaxing holiday, um, but it was very enjoyable. I'll tell you what it taught me. It taught me that I need to fucking relearn all of my Japanese from scratch. But um, yeah, it was a really good time. Also met up with a couple other people, made a friend. Yeah, great times, great times. Uh, Zanelis says, hi, I have a question. Hello there, yeah, ask away. So I saw all of your tutorials on how to draw and I'm improving lots. Hey, I'm really glad to hear it. I kind of want to draw this one character with glasses, but I don't know how to draw them. The placing and the size of glasses confuse me. Could you do a tutorial about that, please? That would be really helpful, and thank you so much for reading this far. That is a great suggestion. So, um, as you can obviously see on screen, whilst I've been rambling away, we're slowly building up Danny and Victoria, my OCs. Um, they are designed a little bit differently than they have been in the past, and obviously they're wearing their Renaissance combat elf garb. However... I am mulling over our third original character, now we're adding to the harem, um, a devil... Uh, basically like a devil lady, a devil girl. So you know those kind of like old school tattoos of red devils, but they're women and all that sort of stuff. So she's a devil demon, i.e. the ones that try to contract people's souls and tempt them, as opposed to like a demon demon. But she's not in the devil, she's not in the hell realm, she's in the pleasure realm, and she actually works as a succubus instead. So I've got all this, a man, when it comes to artists building their own characters, it's all about the law. Oh, my holy shit. So basically, she's a succubus. She's a devil demon, but she works as a succubus, and all her mates are succubi. She's grown up with them. But it means that her powers and her techniques are slightly different. And so I wanted to do a thick on the bottom, thin on the top star character, who's all about the bum and hips. So we're currently working on that. What I'll do for a future Dwarf of Mikey episode is um I'll show you... um the time-lapse footage of me just putting the character sheets together or at least for really early stages where I'm trying to work her out she went through a few different iterations um but yeah basically long story short is she wears glasses to read so a glasses tutorial and how to put glasses on characters but keep them cute without destroying the weight of the face and stuff that is a very good idea I'll tell you what the main hint right now is um focus more on drawing the bottom of the frames from the top um and make sure you're drawing the character without the glasses first, before you actually get those glasses in. Uh, yeah, no, we'll come to it, we'll come to it. Uh, Foxy uh, Chuliflose says, Hey Mikey, can you do an arm tutorial kind of thing? Because I'm kind of struggling with it. Struggling with arms, huh? Yeah, 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 we did one a long time ago. But that's definitely part of the older set of tutorials that all need updating and refreshing. Hot Potato says, I've only watched uh, one of your how to draw videos so far, and I'm already improving so much. Oh, fantastic. You're incredible, thank you. <laughs> I am not incredible, but thank you so much for the kind words. I'll be sure to keep watching all of your content. Your drawings are so good. You, you guys really do charm me. Hey, thank you for those kind words and that feedback. Um, Sky Animation says, I missed Mikey's voice. I'm glad that you're back. Well, okay, that was, that was a massive break that I've had, but we are coming back now. And uh, IDK Wayata says, hey, Mike. Hello there, IDK. I want to know how old are you and when did you begin seriously trying to draw? IDK, I am currently 35 years of old. That's right. I'm a wise wise handsome old man i'm basically like gandalf if anything and um i did so we can't answer this question a lot not that there's ever a problem in asking it but basically way back in the day like when i grew up uh, my mum was an artist my dad had illustrative skills uh, she was a potter and uh, so it was always very natural to me that the thing you did when you were at home just chilling out was probably drawing so it's always kind of in my system i took art at a levels when i was growing up and uh, went to uh, university for architecture but the truth is that um, I took a massive break, did different office jobs and just had a completely different type of life and got back into drawing around about when I started my YouTube channel. So what is that, like five or six years ago? Let's say five because it makes me feel less old, but it's probably closer to six. It's probably seven. Um, so basically everything that I do now, everything I've learned about drawing and illustrating, I'm going to be frank, has nothing to do um, with what I learned at school or anything like that. It's all stuff I've been learning from books or observing anime, TV, art and content and just getting in touch with other artists and things of that nature. But I definitely had one foot in it already like since i was a kid i was always encouraged to draw um so yeah that's kind of the vibe kind of where we are and uh give it oh wait 
I sorry, I said Gavin Dials nearly. Devin Giles says, "Hey Mikey, hello there, Devin. Can you please do a speed paint of Diane from the anime The Seven Deadly Sins?" There's a lot of Seven Deadly Sins fans out here. I do need to keep an eye on this. Hey, thank you for the suggestion. Olivia M says, I'm so glad for your back. I always enjoy watching your videos whilst I draw random stuff in the background. Always manage to make things interesting for me. Olivia M, what have you been drawing right now? And Kaidu-san, and by the way, every single one of you, if you're drawing right now, do me a favor. Stop what you're doing. Get in that chat. Type it. What are you drawing? Tell me. Tell Mikey. Blazing Mewtwo says, Hi, hello there. Can you do a tutorial on Transformers? I'd love to learn how to draw them well. Man! Talk about orthographic, isometric, clean lines. There are some incredible Gundam um, illustrators and Transformers illustrators. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that box-shaped lifestyle is really, really something. Also, yes, we should and we shall. Zimaru forward slash evil stranger says, Every time I see this, when I was like six years old, I would show um, stuff to my mum, and my mum would use her ultimate move and I died. Wait, what? Wait, what? Oh, wait, are you referring to the Mandalorian stuff? Wait, are you just saying that any time you saw Busty artwork, your mum would kill you? Well, I'm, I'm glad you're still here. Are you, are you okay? Is is this a cry for help? Hey, welcome on in. Let me sip this tea. Oh my god, it's so delicious. For a brief period over COVID, I was affected because I couldn't get tea bags or toilet roll, obviously. But um, the toilet roll eventually started becoming back in stock. But Yorkshire tea tea bags took a while where I live. I was not impressed, but thankfully... Thankfully... We are back in. Uzumaki Datibayo says, I love your videos. Thank you very much, Uzumaki. Even my drawings became more beautiful from the day I watched your videos. Can you teach how to design hair and clothes? Funny you should say that. I've been saying it for a while. We need to do a little bit about the folds and creases on clothing. Uh, probably going to need to do more than one tutorial about that, but not a bad idea. Uh, Liko Rello says, Ara ara is away. Mate, that just sat noise alone. Ara ara. Even when I do it, I naturally cup my hand by my cheek. And I imagine like a busty MILF character every single time. Who would have thought that the world of anime could make two noises just conjure up an entire character design? Um, Shad Angel says, Mikey, have you seen the Ghostbusters Afterlife trailer? I think I have, Shad. That's for one where it's a load of kids running around now as Ghostbusters. I'm going to be honest. I know that it's not aimed at me and it's probably going to be a sack of shit. If, for, if we follow the trends of movies... And don't worry, I'm not going to go on another rant, but they're just pumping out a lot of disconnected shit. And by disconnected, I mean there's no overall theme or feeling or particular cultured sense. to. And I'm talking about action movies in particular. I'm talking specifically as an example of the last Predator film, the really forgettable one. And you're just kind of like, <clears throat> it's a standing example now of just, just the shit that they're making. I don't, I don't get it. It really lacks quality. However, however... I am very, very excited that Denis Villeneuve, one of my favourite directors, and the DP um, who worked on Rogue One, i.e. is going to work on the cinematography uh, and the beautiful shots, are both involved in the Dune movie. So I really, really want to see that Dune film. That's basically that, the Dune film and the next James Bond movie. They're kind of the only films I'm remotely excited for at the moment. But again, I'm slightly more out of the touch. Oh my god, I have a lot of work to do for film cram. We need to start cramming in. Now, it's called film cram, but really it's all about TV shows now. But we've got a lot to cram, we've got a lot to do. Let me sit this. <coughs> Excuse me, clearing up my throat. I could edit that out, but the whole point of this series is that I just sit down, get the microphone out, ramble for an hour. I want it to be real. But it does mean it's also a little bit rough around the edges. Miss Boo says, welcome back. Thank you very much, Miss Boo. I wanted to say that your videos really helped me with colouring and skin tones. And I really enjoy these videos where you just talk. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much, each and every one of you. Guys, just clicking um, that subscribe button here and just following along and commenting and stuff. It is super motivating. And I really appreciate you lot, so thank you very much. Uh, Kaidu-san says, For comedy anime, I would heavily recommend Konosuba's Blessing on This Wonderful World. It's a parody of isekai fantasy anime where a bunch of one-trick dicks wearing primary colours fail to do literally anything without relying on a protagonist one uh, and one of the only good stats with high luck. It has a very good and interesting dynamic between all of the characters. Do you know what? I love meta stuff. If it's a parody stroke turning it on its head meta look at a particular genre... Kaidu-san, I will give that a go. Yeah, I'm all for that. Hunter Hunter was a very good flip on a head version of Shonen anime whilst being an incredible Shonen anime. And I know there's that, I forget what it's called, but there's like this, um, 
Magical Girl Superpowers anime, where this kind of cute creature makes a contract with these school kids and gives them the power to fight these evil demons or something. But, like, it's actually super fucking sinister or something like that, and there's always this kind of element of loss. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It's relatively old now. Um, C. Olivia says, uh, have I read it correctly? Says, this guy sounds like Wallace from Wallace and Gromit, and I love it. Hold up, Gromit! There's cheese on the moon! That's... Okay, that was a really bad interpretation. Uh, can you do a gender-bent Natsu? Natsu from... Um, Nanatsu no Tai Tai? Wait, which one's Natsu? Oh, Natsu Dragon Eel! Hmm. Yeah, we could. Yeah, we could. Control-C. Uh, let me... Sorry, I'm just copy-pasting some bits around here. Um, I've got a load of pieces which are all at different states of being done. I've got loads of completed line arts and a few painting pieces which are mapped but haven't been rendered. Um, so we've got like, uh, you know, Final Fantasy Ladies. Um, I've got another upcoming Tsunade Measure My Skill thing coming up because um, I've drawn Tsunade like five times. So this will be maybe the sixth. Um, but yeah, um, we'll add a little bit of gender bending in there as well. Why not? Avine Universe says, you're simply awesome, Mikey. <laughs> hey, thank you. I've watched every single video on this channel and it's helped me learn a lot, like really a lot. This is my favorite art channel now. Oh my God. Thank you. Let's be real. There are some better art channels out there. YouTube is an incredible platform. Now, I hate YouTube itself, but the people on YouTube are amazing. Um, but thank you so much for even considering me like that. That blows my mind. Um, you are my favorite artist. Holy shit. Thank you. Uh, a friend of mine told me two months ago that I would never be able to draw because I'm not an artistic kind of person. Thanks to you, I can rub it in her face now. Oh, that's the sweet, sweet feeling of being able to rub something in someone's face. <laughs> I've just realized what I'm saying. <laughs> Guys, when when you meet a girl who's, you know, who, who cares for you a lot and really trusts you, and one day she might be on her knees showing her appreciation because it's your birthday or something, it's nothing more enjoyable when you can just really just, you know, anyway, it, rub it in there. Anyway, I'm just saying Pornhub. So um, ACL Sternritter says, hello there, Mikey. I love your art. Your tutorials help me a lot. Thank you. Hope you draw more bleach waifus. Bleach. Long story short, fuck yes, absolutely. Bleach is so ripe. Nelly L, so ripe. White Rose 6725 says, Mikey's back. Hello there, White Rose. Also, I hope you had a wonderful time in Japan. I'll show you what I've been doing on Twitch next stream. Oh, White Rose, we've probably seen it since then. So guys, um, for those of you who are still listening, I do a lot of art live streams on Twitch as well. I mean, I'm, by the time this video is out, I'm probably just playing The Last of Us again, but I'm, I do do the artwork, I do promise. Um, and you're always more than welcome to come drop into the stream and share the artwork that you're on. It just must be safe for work, because Twitch is a bit funny like that. And Cosmic Draconian says, Mikey! Hello there, Cosmic. Long time, long time indeed. By the way, watching you drawing is breathtaking. And also, do you play or will you play the Pokemon games? No, Cosmic... Oh, well, Cosmic Draconian, thank you so much. No. Now, if I look over my shoulder, I can still have the original Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue with the original Game Boy. Those are the games that I played. Hashtag not my Pokemon. Those are, those are the ones that I played. And they are very, very addictive. And I also played a tiny bit of Pokemon Go when it came out, which was absolutely just a mind-blowing concept. Well done, society. For Pokemon gym trainers, do I want to do fan arts of them? You bloody better believe that I do. But actual the Pokemon games, <clears throat> no. I've been out of it for so long. I know that I personally don't have the time. And I'm not so desperate to do it either that I'm going to like recommit to those. Now, I'm certainly going to keep my ear to the ground. I want to know what's going on in the world of Pokemon. But um, I remember just casually being in another streamer's channel and they'd put together like a tier list of all of their Pokemons and stuff. And I was just like... You guys are in this, you guys are in this shit deep. Like, you guys are in deep and I'm never going to get deep enough. So I'll leave it for now. But also there's so many amazing games. I've still not played Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War 4. There's the entire Assassin's Creed vibes to get on. Mate, there's so many games. So many games. Agent Lima says, I'm glad that you're back, Mikey. Thank you so much, dude. Any tips for traveling to Japan? Yes, speak some basic Japanese. Even if it's only a few basic key phrases, it will make a whole load of difference as to how people treat you and approach you if they see that you've made a minor effort instead of just being a foreign tourist to do a tiny bit of japanese they're gonna you know they might not be impressed but they're gonna find it a bit cute at least and they will just be slightly nicer to you um, i'm going in a few months and i would like some advice from another foreigner who's visited agent lima foreigners rail pass if you want to travel to lots of places Get that foreigner's rail pass. It's so good. But the chances are you've already come back since then. So welcome back. How is it? Tyler Harris says, I'm so bad at drawing. I can just look at my sketch lines and be like, yep, 
this is gonna be garbo dude mate that's actually me every time as well i have to just um go, oh man so it's not uncommon that I will hit a point in my artwork where I'm very tempted to abandon the piece. And it often happens roughly around the same stage. And it's only experience that tells me I need to go past that and render in a few flat tones and basic colors first before I decide if I'm going to keep it or leave it. Because once you go past that stage, things start looking a little bit better. The sunshine starts to come back into your artwork. But again, that kind of depends on how you render and do stuff. Also, I will be doing a video where I talk about my clean anime method versus my painty style. Not that they're my techniques or anything, just a lot of people do it like this. But I still have two very distinct ways that I like to approach pieces. And um, it's just going to save me a lot of breath if I put it into a video instead of trying to explain it to you guys manually each time. Um, Old Wave Kid says, hey Mikey, I really love your stuff. Thank you very much, Old Wave. Your tutorials have helped. I'm glad to hear it. And if you haven't already, could you draw Tei Takamaki, who's the nurse from Persona 5? <gasps> Oh my! <clears throat> so guys, I have Persona 5, and I've had it for ages, I bought it second hand, not for cheap either. And now they've released Persona 5 Royale, and basically made my version completely defunct! So that's good. Anyway, so yeah, I'll, I will play it one day and I'll have an idea of the characters, but ah, mate. Uh, Jed says that XP Pen came out with a new device, I can't wait to see a review from you. Oh my goodness. I still need to do a review for the Deco Pro Medium. Oh god, when's that going to be out? Um, and just warm up back into all of it. Basically, guys, I'm just I've got to I've got to shake off a lot of rust. But um, yeah, the channel's going to be up. We're going to be making art videos again. Might not be super perfect with all of the deadlines and all of the bits that we come out until I'm super into it again. But uh, yeah, those product reviews. Oh, also, I've got a review um a Wacom Cintiq. I've got a review of uh, iPad uh, Pro 12 inch and stuff. Yeah, I've got a few products lying around that need doing, but I'm still just enjoying my Canvas Pro. <laughs> Mate, me and my Huey, me and my Huey on Canvas Pro 20, going on adventures together is plenty. So it's just, eh, I don't need to unplug it basically. Anyway, yeah, we've got a lot to do on the channel, a lot to get back into. Those review videos take usually at least two days, there's so much effort, so... I try to just review interesting products now as opposed to every single tablet in the world because a lot of the really off-brand tablets, long story short, is they might be okay, but you're still better buying an on-brand tablet for the same price and just playing it safe with XP Pen or Huion. Um, but, you know, I don't want you guys to be lost out there either. Like, if I have the opportunity to play with a tablet and tell you what's good or warn you off what's bad, then, you know, I'm semi-obliged to do it. With great power... With great live streaming power, with great YouTube comes great responsibility. It's, it's the Peter Parker problem with tablets. I should review them and make sure that you guys don't get screwed over or buy the wrong product. Because I want your... Because bear in mind, I want your experience of a world of digital art or getting into it to be a positive one. I want more people doing art. I'm very selfish. I want art to be bigger and more prominent in life and world in general. Because it's very good. It helps you with life's troubles, takes your mind off stuff. It's super therapeutic. And also... You, People end up drawing fucking awesome stuff. It makes me very happy. It's win-win. Um, so, yeah, no, we need to do more tablet reviews. Even if they take ages. It takes so long. It takes so long to do. Anyway, um, and Devacon says, Hey, Mikey. Hello there, Devacon. I love your work. Guys, thank you so much for all of these positive comments. Um, I believe the anime that you're thinking of with a Valkyrie girl and her watermelon friend was Heaven's Lost Property. Tenchi no Atoshimono. It was indeed. I don't really lo watch a lot of ecchi anime, but I can definitely vouch for Keijo. It's funny and absurd and the right level of pervy without being cringy, much like yourself. <laughs> You're awesome. Okay, I like <laughs> You cheeky, okay, you cheeky bugger. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take your suggestion because you made me laugh. Uh, Carlos Rodriguez says, hey, Mikey, welcome back. Hello, Carlos. How have you been, man? Glad to see you again. I hope you feel well soon. Thank you so much. As you can probably tell, I've had a frog in my throat for most of this episode, but I've kind of tried to talk my way through it whilst also sipping lots of tea. It's for the most part been working. So thank you, Carlos. And uh, Burz Zerk says, your skin tutorial worked like magic. I wow and sit half an hour with my mouth open. Hey, Berserk, I'm really glad. If those tutorials are actually helping you with your artwork, it is great, guys. It really makes me happy. So welcome any new subscribers, new followers, all that stuff and ting. Absolute pleasure to have you. Bojack's here. He says, hey, Mikey's back. I bet you found out all the sweet, sweet doujins during your trip. <gasps> I did get my hands, I think I've actually flexed on this before, but I did get my hands on the whole Tengeki How to Draw book, um, which I still haven't really opened, but I do very much intend to work my way all the way through in a sketchbook because 
Hotengeki's work is absolutely fantastic. I love it. I love the way he waits and does his women. And uh, Braveheart says, where's Mikey gone? It's been four months about. It's been even longer, Braveheart. It's been even longer. I hit 700k. So, guys, make sure you're following me on Twitter. But I hit 700k subscribers whilst I wasn't even making YouTube content, which is thank you so much, guys. Thank you, thank you. I really do appreciate you, even if I'm not here. Um, so I put up one of those memes. It was the old Michael Scott one from the photo of the old manager where his hand's getting shaken and he's got the long, like, really bad hair. And that was just me receiving 700k subs but also having not uploaded content since like November of last year. Uh, Guillermo Nieves says, How's your trip from overseas, Mikey? We've missed you, dude. By the way, that is one well-endowed Mandalorian, if ever I saw one. Thank you so much. I uh, thank you. It is in my nature to endow things. So this is kind of a thing that came up a while ago, is that with a lot of the things like the Resident Evil remakes, um, there's been some people who are just like, oh, they're desexifying the women. They've reduced Tifa's boob size in the Final Fantasy VII games and stuff like that. And I'm going to be honest, if you're changing the format and feeling of the game and making it air quotes more realistic or changing the overall artistic direction, I don't really have a problem with these variations in design personally. Because also, it doesn't matter how much you remove the sexiness or the boobs from a character. When it comes around to my time to do a fan art of that character, you better bloody believe I'm going to be putting the boobs and the sexiness back in. So it's kind of like no loss as far as I'm concerned, but a lot of people... A lot of people don't like that stuff. Although, to be fair, I do understand because it's not necessarily people complaining that Tifa's boobs are smaller. They're complaining because it's a symptom of a wider topic of homogenizing a status quo of making everything slightly more acceptable for easily offended people because we've now got a Twitter culture where people now have a louder voice and reach than before. And some of those people don't necessarily deserve it because even if they think they're trying to make the world a better place by saying, oh, you shouldn't over-sexualize these characters and this woman should be different. Actually, what you're doing is enforcing your own personal narrow-minded view on a wider community. And what's scary is that people at a larger end have to start listening to it because they don't want to lose advertising on these larger projects so i understand where you're coming from in theory um but overall i just think it's always exciting to see variation in design um that being said though i'll tell you what's not been exciting to see i uh saw the twitter meme of the ghost in the shell the latest one uh, of a guy doing backflips up the stairs and uh, we all had a laugh of it and you guys know my opinion on cg animated physical characters you can cg animate anything in an anime but not the human characters for a lot of reasons but we've been through this before and so on stream i tried watching the trailer to the new ghost in the shell and i didn't even sit all the way through the trailer it just looked like exactly the kind of terrifically bad garbage um, that just needs avoiding i just can't stand the look that they've given those characters it's such a in like such a wide and interesting invested world and they're just taking the wrong kind of angle but much like the um spider-man spider-verse stuff i think you have to imagine every kind of outing of ghost in the shell as being set in an alternative universe you know it's it's earth one it's earth two it's x23 it's all that sort of stuff um however guys my delicious friends i do believe we've just come towards the end of this episode thank you so much for joining me but we've been shaking off the dust we've been bringing our sweet selves back in for a little bit more of draw with mikey and once again we've got an episode down so if you guys have had anything to say to me which i've missed in the comment section do not be afraid copy and paste it into the comment section of today's episode with any luck i'll be reading it next time around this episode is out on a thursday evening I try to aim to get them out on a Wednesday usually. That's why I just say midweek in case I'm ever a little bit tardy. But I just want to say thank you so much to you guys again. It is lovely to be kind of back here, back on the YouTubes doing stuff. Thanks for bearing with the derpiness as we kind of warm up back in. Um, so I need to just warm up my skills with the sketchbook a bit before we do another tutorial where we're going to be addressing clothes and things. A lot more fan arts are going to be coming up back to back because I've been doing a lot of behind the scenes work for the Patreon catch up. And again, this current Patreon set of this current piece of looking at right now you delicious things should be out around about this weekend for the old schoolers as for my new recent patrons just bear with i bloody love you thank you for the support and yeah it's coming whether you've stayed gone returned regardless it is coming to you thank you so much you lovely people i'm gonna see you next time and take care